let's talk a little bit about discipleship within mm-hmm. the worship culture of Gateway. Yes. Because you guys have been doing worship for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there's always a flow transitioning of who's leading a song, who's writing a song. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate that, um, with so many creatives? That's awesome. I love, you know, the, the vision of our house is to, and, and our purpose is to help people develop an intimate relationship with the Lord. So everything we do, it starts at that point, whether it's songwriting, whether it's preparing, you know, your worship set for the weekend, um, whether it's, you know, we're figuring out who's going to serve where and who's doing what we all come in with open hands. That's we always, you, you hear that verbiage so much in our community is we're open handed. We know this is not about us. This, our, our main goal is to help people develop an intimate relationship with the Lord. So how do we do that? And, and where does that come from? And so I think that's something that's beautiful about um, who we are and, and how we do things. We're very collaborative um, in everything that we do, um, decisions that we make. Um, it's uh, decisions are never made in a silo. Um, and so I, I just think it's us coming together. And like, it's not about us. Right. We're doing this together and we want to help yeah. people encounter the Lord. Yeah. And, and I would say like on our on our projects, you, you hear leaders and you see their names, but almost every one of those leaders is a local campus yes. worship pastor Love who that. pastors a team. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I can say for me, I mentioned earlier, I've, I've been a part of the church for 20 years. I started coming to the church when I was 10 years old, but I started off playing drums. I never led worship. I never sang. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever have dreams of doing those things, mm-hmm. um, but there was space made for me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was given safe places to fail, honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. and mess up. I botched my second service on <laughs> drums ever, came off yeah. the click. We're leading a new life worship song back then. I remember it. I remember it because it was embarrassing, but I had pastors that came alongside me, David Moore, Moore is one of our worship leaders, yeah. uh, and he's been a part of Gateway for a long time. So he came alongside me and uh, told me it was okay because yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah. because there was yeah. safe space to fail. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's a big part of discipleship yes. is giving people room, inviting mm-hmm. them along for the journey, mm-hmm. working with them, coaching them when they need it. I needed a lot of coaching through the yeah. years and I got other opportunities and Pastor Mark's been a big part of my journey as well, giving me space and everything. So it's just so cool to see, like we're local church people yeah. and yeah. that's what the local church does well is yes. it brings people in, sees gifting in them and then gives them room to yeah. operate in that gifting and to grow in that gifting. One of the things too, yeah. I was thinking, I uh, we just came out of a, we have, uh, we had a lot of services this past week and we do uh, like a thing called a presbytery where we, we have these services where it's a prophetic presbytery and people, words in due season are spoken over. And, mm-hmm. But we have worship services that are attached to that. And I went to four of our campuses <laughs> during this and I was, aw- I was just in awe of the fact that every campus is, is just so well equipped with great leaders and voices that I didn't hear I heard at some of the campuses because we're always developing the young talent that we have right. and when you ask about discipleship I think it's a stewardship issue too yeah. because Come it's on. like That's it's so like true. the parable yeah. of the talents if God gives us people with gifts yeah. Uh, and they have the gift to, to write, which mm-hmm. that's what hope oversees, songwrite, or if they have the gift to lead, we all kind of pour into that. Mm-hmm. It's a responsibility on us in leadership not to bury that, but to help bring that to life, to help cultivate the gift that God put into them yeah. so that if he gave us the one talent, then let's develop it into two. If he gave us mm-hmm. the five, let's develop it into 10. If he gave us the 10, let's develop it into 20. It's stewardship. Yeah. And so it's like, our responsibility real, really from the central perspective because we oversee and help steward mm-hmm. the talents and the gifts of multiple campuses is to help see their gift come to life yep. yeah. and to uncover it and to give them a platform and an opportunity for it to grow. Yeah, Man, I love that. Because I think one of, one of the things that we, um, I think we can fall into as worship leaders, Sunday comes every week. Yes. And planning center, people decline and we can <laughs> get, mm-hmm. we can get stuck in that grind of like, I just need to get to the next week. I just need to get to the next week. I love that you said that. And I hope yeah. all of our worship leaders that are listening heard that mm-hmm. it really is a stewardship. Yeah. The people that God's entrusted to you yeah. and to your church. That's right. And that's the difference really, I think, between like, uh, I've always told our teams, a worship leader can, can lead a church in worship, but a worship pastor, pastors their team. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's a value for our house too. That's so I mean, good. I love that. So good. I think it's so important to just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And I love that you called the call that stewardship mm-hmm. yeah. because we are called. And, you know, for a lot of us, you were leading in churches of uh, 50 or hundred people mm-hmm. and you've got volunteers and you're like yeah. that. Yeah. 
the the gift that was given might be really small, yeah. but you can help grow that. Right. You can That's steward true. that. I was talking to um, one of our, our writers, an amazing writer, like incredible. And he told me he got started because he was in this little church and it was 50 people, yeah. but the youth slash worship pastor every week would uh, sit down and write with him. Oh, wow. And wow. just poured into him. And he's yeah. just, you know, a little small town. Yes. But everything that he, who he is today, he attributes to someone just believing in him at that young age. hundred yeah. percent. I mean, that's that's the story of so many people's development is mm-hmm. just somebody came alongside them yeah. and showed them how they, you know, that yeah. phrase more is caught than taught. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that is the story of so many people yeah. at Gateway. That's my story. Uh, I think that's so crucial yeah. for people's development and discipleship. So good. And, yep. and, and I, I remember years ago, um, there was a young worship pastor we put into leadership. He was assigned to a campus. And so, and the big question that he had for us was, can I, is there room for me to mess up? And it's like, yeah. Yeah. you can't develop people unless you give them room to right. not get it right. Mm-hmm. Because how can someone learn unless they have the freedom to go for something? Yep. And so right. it's like, and so it's like, even in a writing room, because I know whoever would be watching this, maybe they're leading worship or maybe they long to write worship songs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I tell so many young writers so often, maybe you're sitting in a co-write with writers that you feel like are so much better than you. It might not be that they're more gifted than you. It might just be that they've done it more so they work yeah. quicker. Yeah. Yeah. So don't feel bad if you're mm-hmm. sitting there and it doesn't come to you quickly. Stay leaned in, never lean out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and always be willing to learn. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's the thing that we all, I mean, here's the thing. Our albums now are filled with writers that weren't a part of yep. The, the Gateway Projects that we released two albums ago. Yeah. Mm. And it's because they, those young writers stay leaned in. We gave them space to develop mm. and they're growing. And now they're the ones that are writing the songs that are the most wanted songs and the most listenable songs and the most singable songs that we have on projects because they kept writing. Yeah. Yep. You know? So, they kept pushing. Yes. Kept pushing. Yeah. yeah. 